Hey guys, you've seen us launch rockets in a couple of episodes now, but in today's episode, we're gonna show you exactly what you need to do to build your very own rockets. So let's go get started. So we're gonna start with a more simple rocket and then we'll work our way up to a more complicated one. The most simple rocket that you're gonna build, you're going to need two empty two liter bottles. One is going to be the body of the rocket that's going to be filled with water and air and the other one we're going to cut up into all the extra parts that we need. Make a cut with a sharp knife and then finish it off with the scissors. Now we have the nose cone that's going to go on top of our rocket. Now we want to cut a long piece about 10 or 11 centimeters and we're going to use this to hold our fins. We've cut our bottle into three pieces. We're going to take the body of our rocket. It's going to go on top of here. That's going to hold the fins. And then this part is going to form the nose cone. So these are the parts we need. This one can go into the recycling. So the next thing we need to do is we need to add a little bit of weight into the nose cone. It's really important to have some weight in the nose cone. It keeps the whole rocket a lot more stable. And something like an old rag, some old towel or t-shirt, anything like that bunch up there is perfect. And there we go, we have some weight in the nose cone. So this part's tricky. You wanna rotate the bottle until you can see that the nose cone is lined up really nicely with the body below. Then get someone to help you tape it in place. Once you have the nose cone held in place, put a good seam of strong tape the whole way around to hold it together. The nose cone is ready. Now our nose cone is finished. Let's move to the bottom of the rocket. First thing you want to do is you want to remove this little part here. Uh, it's going to be important later. You can just cut that off. And we also need to add this extra part. This is going to be attached to the fins. And that will mean that we'll have a fully finished rocket once we get those done. I'm going to cut three fins out of this piece of plywood here. We're going to attach them onto this piece of bottle, just like on this other rocket here. I've marked out three triangles here for our fins. They're 15 centimeters tall and nine centimeters across, but you can play around with different sizes yourselves. Now, let's go cut them out. We have our lovely plywood fins. Now, you don't have to use plywood. You can use whatever you can find lying around. Old election posters, stuff like that are just fine. What we want to do next is we want to mount them onto this little uh, piece that we have here and we need them to be exactly spaced evenly so that our rocket will take off really nicely and in a straight line. In order to do that we need a long piece of paper. So we're going to roll this piece along the paper the whole way along until we get right to the edge. Now we mark the end on both sides, make sure it's nice and even and if we roll back you can see where the end is. So we measure our length. This is the circumference of our bottle. It's 31 centimeters, and we divide that up into three. But we roll it back up again, make sure we're, our lines are lined up at the edge, and we can just tape it in place here temporarily. And what are we gonna do here? We're gonna mark one spot here, and mark the same spot on the other side. And then we roll it back until we see the next line. Mark that spot on the bottle too, on both sides. And the last one. So now we have three perfectly evenly spaced marks where we can put each of our fins. I'm gonna drill two holes and screw them on. You could probably glue them on if you want. They'll work just as fine, but I just wanna be safe. Now our fins are ready. Yeah, so the advantage of this is we can just slide it straight onto our rocket, yeah, and we didn't have to worry about possibly putting holes in our rocket chamber, anything like that where air could leak out. We can also remove these fins and use them on another rocket if we build a different one. So the important thing is to make sure it's really nice and straight, rotate it around, make sure everything looks good and straight. Once it's straight, you can tape it up well and it's ready to go. So that was our smaller rocket. But if you want to go to the moon, for example, well, you're going to need more fuel. So we're going to make a bigger rocket that has three fuel chambers all connected to each other and all airtight. And we're going to show you how to do that so you can get even higher. For this rocket, you're going to need five bottles. So you can ask around from your friends or family just to keep them by after they're finished them. Ideally, they should all be the same. Now, three of the bottles are going to form our chamber. So instead of having one bottle for our pressure chamber, we're going to have one two, three. So this is going to be a three chamber rocket. 
Now the other two bottles, we're gonna cut them up to make all the parts that have to hold it together. So let's start with that. We're gonna cut a quite a long section out of this bottle and you'll see why in a minute. You want it to be at least, oh, 15 or 16 centimeters long. It's okay to be too long, it's not okay to be too short. So, like before, make a small cut with a sharp knife, carefully, oh, and then finish it off with the scissors because it's quite easy to cut yourself if you try and do all of it with the knife. So try and keep in a relatively straight line. So here's our long piece. We're going to do the exact same thing with the other bottle. Here we go. We have our two pieces. Now these are going to be able to hold our three chambers together with a little bit of strength. If we want to extend our pressure chamber over multiple bottles, we're going to have to drill a hole in the end of one bottle right in the center. And we're going to have to figure a way to connect it to the next one and then to the next one. Once you have a small hole drilled right in the center, you're going to have to drill a bigger hole because we need to be able to insert this. Now, what is this? This is a threaded piece of hollow bar. Okay, a threaded piece of hollow bar. It means we can screw it together, but water and air will be able to pass through the middle. This is going to go in here and this is going to be the connection that we're going to have from one to the other. Okay, so let's drill our hole to fit this. Now we have our hole drilled and we can fit our piece of threaded rod in just nicely. Now we'll be able to connect one bottle to the next. But uh, you might be wondering, where do you get this stuff from? Well, it's actually a thing called lamp rod. It comes in a long length like this and it goes in the inside of a lamp. So uh, a wire can run down the inside and then you can screw it from either end. So if you try and find some of this, you can just cut a little piece off of that. So the next problem is that this piece here, we don't want to put it in from the outside. We want to put it in from the inside. In order to do that, we're going to need a coat hanger. We stretch apart our coat hanger and we put on our piece of lamp rod with a bolt and a washer and a piece of rubber. And we're going to slide that inside, just like so. So the reason we do this is we want to try and get it through this hole here. So we have to thread it over till it's sticking out. And then we go, whoo, and we should be able to get it. If we jiggle it around just enough. Ho, ho, ho. Come on, you beauty. That's her. Ah. Ah, ah, ah. Effortless, it's effortless. There we go. Now it's going in from the inside. Okay, so remember that piece of lamp rod you put in? It's very important that you have the, your bolt on here and then you put on your washer. then you have to put on a rubber washer. Now, if you don't have a rubber washer, you can make homemade ones like this. You can just cut them out of an old bicycle tube. So you just mark a circle of the size you need. Yeah, once you have that marked, you just take a pair of scissors and you cut them out. We need to tighten the bolt inside, so you need to make sure you have a long enough handle that can go the whole way down to reach to the bolt inside. We can then slip on our rubber washer. Okay, so this keeps a good seal. That's why you need the rubber washer. It forms a really good watertight and airtight seal. Once you have the rubber washer on, now you're ready to put on the next part, a lid that you've also drilled a hole in, the same size. That goes on like so. Mm -hmm. Then we need one more rubber washer. On she goes. And onto that goes our last bolt. Effortless. Tighten it up. You don't want any air to leak out. I don't want any water to leak out. Now we have fully connected this lid that we drilled a hole in to the bottom of this other bottle and there's rubber and washers between everything to push it all together so that it's watertight. So now what happens is we can screw on the next bottle and now we have two bottles connected together head to tail and they are perfectly airtight or at least we hope they are.
One little thing we're going to add though to make it a little bit more strong structurally because there'll be a lot of weight, it'll be moving very fast is we're going to use this piece that we cut out earlier and we're going to put it in between both of these like so. Cut it to the right length so that it can screw in. See that? It's too long now. We need to cut it to the right length so that it can screw in. So let's do that. We kept adjusting it until we got it just the right length so that we can tighten that. So it's a tight seal at the bottle and it's also a nice flat surface here and it's strong and it's aerodynamic and we're starting to get closer. We just need to do the same thing for the next part of the rocket. So let's do that. Okay, so we finished assembling our three chamber rocket. Look how tall it is. Three different chambers and we've connected them all together just like we showed at so, uh, like so. And we also have our weighted nose cone up at the top here. Um, we also have our one chamber rocket that we built at the start and uh, you might be wondering what this contraption in the middle is. Well, we have to launch our rockets, remember, we have to fill them with compressed air and water, and that's what this will allow us to do. Now, building this is quite complicated, so I've uploaded a document that you can find a link to in the description that explains it to it in full detail. But I'll give you a quick crash course on how it works. So we'll slide on one of our rockets like so. It slides on here, and then it hits a rubber seal. Now you have to really squeeze it carefully to get past the rubber seal. And lovely, so it's past the rubber seal. You might see a load of cable ties there, and you're wondering what that's about. But well, if I lift up this section here, you'll see those cable ties. Do you see the, the little lip that's on the bottle? They actually catch it. So I push it up, bang, and they've caught onto that lip that's on the bottle. So that means the bottle can't go anywhere. It's locked into place. This white tube here is connected to this tube here that we can connect to a bicycle pump. So if we start pumping here, yeah, well then this will fill up with compressed air and the bottle can't go anywhere because it's held in place and sealed. The only difference is we'll first have some water in it for it to take off. But once we have the water up to here, we just do that. We just pump it and that's how the air gets in. So that's how you make your bottle rockets. So you got to see how they worked in the other episodes. Now you know how to build them. Don't forget to check out that document so that you can build the launcher as well and have fun making your rockets. Do it safely and make sure to send us on some pictures because we'd love to see how yours turn out. So thanks so much for tuning in and we're looking forward to seeing you on the next one.